So in our last video, we talked about how the current ratio could be a really good measure of a firm's short-term liquidity. And by that, we meant that by basically taking the firm's current assets and dividing those by current liabilities, we could get a pretty good idea of how well equipped a firm was to meet its obligations in the coming year. So if a firm, for example, had current assets uh, divided by current liabilities that, that was greater than one, uh, that tended to suggest that the firm uh, was liquid enough to meet the obligations that were going to be coming due in the next period. And, and a firm with a higher such ratio than another firm, we could say, would be more liquid. But there was this issue, and the elephant in the room was that current assets include inventory. And in times of, of recession or some kind of shock or, or problem with the firm, the firm might have difficulty moving its inventory, and we might wonder how liquid this inventory is. If the firm can't sell the inventory, and the inventory is included obviously in current assets, then the current ratio won't be the best measure of liquidity because unsold inventory can't be used to pay off uh, these liabilities that are going to be coming due. And that's uh, kind of why we need a quick ratio, or otherwise known as the acid test ratio. Basically what we're doing is, is addressing this issue uh, by just excluding inventory uh, from the computation of current assets and computing a new ratio. So when we compute this quick ratio, we can think of it in terms of current assets minus inventory, or we can think about it like this, in terms of cash plus marketable securities plus net receivables. And then we just divide it the same way we did with the current ratio. We just have the denominator again as current liabilities. And this is going to yield the quick ratio. So again, well, we also have it where if you have a higher quick ratio, that's going to imply higher liquidity. Let's take a look at an example. So with firm one, let's say that we have cash uh, of $100. And for firm two, we have cash of $80. And then there's marketable securities of 60 for firm one and 140 for firm two. And then net receivables of 170 and 200 for firm two. And so just to make this a little bit easier, we'll just go ahead and subtotal these. And then this subtotal is basically current assets uh, minus, minus inventory. So when we do the subtotal, we end up with 330 for firm one and then 420 for firm two. So I'll just, I'll just put a little note here. We can think of this as current assets minus inventory. That's just an, might be more intuitive for you. And now we need to know current liabilities. And let's say for firm one, current liabilities are 300. And then for firm two, current liabilities are 600. Let me scroll down here for a little more. So now we just take our subtotal, which is the current assets excluding inventory. We just take that subtotal for firm one and divide it by the current liabilities for firm one. And what does that yield? Well, that's going to give us our quick ratio. Just write that over here. So our quick ratio for firm one is going to be 1.1. And for firm two, we do the same thing. We divide this 420 by 600, and it yields a current ratio of 0.7. So how can we interpret this? Well, the 1.1 for firm one, that, that quick ratio is higher than the 0.7 for firm two. So that implies that firm one is more liquid. 